in order to have a better work-life balance, I think do more by doing less. Get quality work done instead of a million little tasks that get you nowhere. And I think the best way to do that is to delegate. I love bookkeeping. Hi, everyone, and thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. My name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. And today we want to extend what we were talking about in our last episode. In our last episode, we discussed boundaries in business. And that's something that's extremely important, especially when you're a business owner. Um, But today we really want to elaborate on some actual ways that you can apply having boundaries and actual things that you can do uh, to protect yourself, to protect your business, and to ultimately give you that Zen work-life balance. Melissa, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. How are you? I am. I'm doing good. I This work-life balance series has come at such a great time because I think it's something that I have trouble implementing myself. And so being able to talk to you about it and being able to really dive into having boundaries and really working on a good, healthy work-life balance. It's been, it's been really beneficial to me. Yeah. It's been a really great reminder for me too. And it has also reminded me to really bring the subject up in real life and talk to other business owners about it because, you know, I, you know, we, of course, have this podcast as a really great place um, to discuss these topics uh, with other bookkeeping professionals. Um, But I think obviously it would really benefit everybody. Everybody needs a reminder. Um, So I really appreciated that. And I've been talking to a lot of friends and colleagues, and it seems to be a topic that really relates to everyone, regardless of, you know, what industry they're working in. You know, what's really interesting about this whole subject is that I think it is a little bit controversial because in where the controversy lies is kind of a generational, it's like a big generational difference between the older generations who kind of didn't believe in boundaries as much. And I don't, and I don't want to be rude and I don't want to generalize, but I've learned that the general consensus is that the older generations didn't really have a whole lot of boundaries in business. And that's who typically is kind of at the top of the pyramid when it comes to the corporate world. And then (laughs) the ones that are, you know, fighting people's boundaries. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And so it's like, you're kind of teaching different crowds how to establish their boundaries with work. Um, And it's really interesting to talk to different age groups and different generations about how they feel about having boundaries. That is so interesting. And I I think it also pairs really well with the idea of delegation. And a lot of reasons, a, a lot of the reason that people do not delegate is the assumption that they will be seen as lazy if they essentially put their work off on other people. Because if somebody else is doing that task, then are that is that person or is somebody else going to see that and think, okay, well then what are what are you doing? Right? You must be yeah. lazy. You don't even want to do your own work. And so yeah. that connects really well to, you know, creating boundaries and having a work-life balance. If I am not working 60 hours a week, then am I really hustling? Am I really, you know, committed? Um, are people going to think that I'm lazy and I don't want to work? Um, the answer is no, right? For a lot of, at least our generation and younger generations, we see that difference. But I do think that, um, you know, that's not true for everybody. And there may be people in your life or in your corporate corporate culture that will think that, yeah, if you're delegating or if you're not working 60 hours a week, maybe you're not motivated or maybe you're lazy. Um, but they're wrong. And so what I think is that you should take that as a learning opportunity, as an educational opportunity to educate them on what life really should be. Um, And I'd rather essentially accept those people with love and care that they didn't have the role models that they really needed 
when they were coming up. And if I need to do that from essentially my place as, you know, somebody less senior to them, I'll, I'll find a way to do that. Um, because I think that it's just something that needs to be taught and shown that, uh, that it's really, we should be working to live, not living to work. And, and that really needs to be learned over time. Yeah. Well, and I think, I think that comes to kind of my first point on, on, um, something that you can actually easily implement, uh, in order to have a better work-life balance. I think do more by doing less, get quality work done instead of a million little tasks that get you nowhere. And I think the best way to do that is to delegate. And I know we had a whole episode on delegation, so I won't even dive into that, but I think that's, I think that's one of the first things that you can really work on is get your tasks organized, get your processes organized. Even if your processes aren't perfect, they don't have to be, but figure out what you can delegate and work on the, do more quality work instead of a bunch of little tasks that don't really get you moving forward because you're kind of pulled behind by having a million things to do. Um, And that's something that me, I'm, I'm having to work on and and that I'm struggling with is really prioritizing what needs to be done at work and what needs to be done at home and finding things that I can hire someone to help me with. Um, And and it might not even be an issue of hiring. If, if your finances aren't in a place for that, it can be asking for help. Um, Or, you know, if your kids are at school, ask someone to carpool with you or, you know, learn different ways to delegate so that you don't feel like you're pulled in a million different directions. Um, And that's something that I'm learning. That is a great point. And I think, you know, the biggest, I think, um, what's the word? Like the biggest, uh, like rejection of that theory, I guess I can't think of like the smart word to say it is that they don't have anyone to delegate to. Um, and so in that sense, if you don't have anybody to delegate, say you're introverted, you don't want to ask to carpool, say you, um, you know, you don't have the money to, to, to buy it. You don't have family around, uh, whatever it might be. You're just saying it's not possible. Um, then delegate to your future self, because what you said was really important, Hannah, which is like prioritizing. And so if you set that boundary with yourself and say that I have X amount of time in my day for me to preserve my sanity. That is what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm going to stick to. And if it doesn't get done today, it can get done on this day. It can get done tomorrow. It can get done next week. Um, I absolutely love prioritizing tasks in like an ABC model of like, this is what has to get done today. This, you know, B would be nice if it got done today, but if it doesn't get done today, it can get done tomorrow. C, it could be this week, next week, D, it just needs to get done, but there's really no timetable on it. Um, so taking that, really finding a good system of how to prioritize those tasks and then stick to it is really important so that you're not scattered, so that you're not sitting at your desk thinking, oh crap, what do I need to work on now? Am I missing something? I have all of these things to do and I don't know where to get started. Like set yourself up for success by planning out your day, planning out your week, planning out your month so that when you sit down at your desk, just like you said, you're working smarter, not harder. You know exactly what you need to do, when to do it. You're figuring out how to do it. It's getting done. And then when that clock strikes, whatever hour it is that you set, boom, shut down all those windows, turn that laptop off and you're done for the day. If you didn't get it done, delegate it to your future self. I, I don't, I cannot remember who said this, um, it was the most genius thing I ever heard was, um, that's uh, future Melissa's problem. Like that is future you's problem. Okay. Like you can only do so much, um, and you need to preserve your current self. Today's show is brought to you by Keeper, the one app to run your bookkeeping business. Keeper helps you get faster client responses with your own custom branded QuickBooks integrated client portal. Finally, 
You can say goodbye to those pesky spreadsheets full of uncategorized transactions. Keeper also helps you catch those embarrassing coding errors before your clients do. And with Keeper, you can generate beautiful custom reports that your clients will absolutely love to read. To find out more, go to keeper.app. That's keeper.app. Mention I Love Bookkeeping to get 20% off your first three months. Again, go to keeper.app to find out more. Thank you for listening. Well, and I think that that kind of leads me to my next point of avoiding overscheduling and spreading yourself thin. And boy, oh boy, do I do this. Um, it's actually really funny. I had a friend tell me, I, I'm pretty sure it was my roommate because I was just running around like a crazy person in my house. And she was like, Hannah, you stress me out with your schedule. Like you're stressing me out because you think you can cram all of this in the one day because you just want to say yes to everything. Yes. And people please. And I mean, it, yeah. And it's like, I'm like, why did I do that? You know, have you ever seen the memes where it's like, when you agree to plans, when you're, when you're in a good mood and then the day rolls around and you're like, oh shit, I don't want to do this. I feel like I'm the queen of that, but agreeing to do things like multiple things that I just don't have the capacity for that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And then it, when it rolls around, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And I think that a lot of people can relate to that and not. So I think another great thing that to start implementing, if you're listening is to stop spreading yourself thin and over scheduling and kind of circling back to what you just said prioritize A, B, and C. What needs to get done today? What absolutely has to get done? What can I delegate to either somebody else or my future self? And what's something that I can kind of put on the back burner for when I have a little more spare time? And I think that's, I think that's like, that's so simple, but it's such a major thing that can really be life-changing to just keep your day-to-day life peaceful. And I have a lot of really great practical tips for how to do this with your scheduling calendar. But I actually would love for us to talk about that in a future episode, because I think that's going to be 15 minutes just on its own. Um, So stay tuned for that guys. But I have some practical, like this is what you can go and do in your scheduling calendar to make that happen so that you preserve your future self because you know, it's great to say that you're not going to overschedule yourself, but we all make mistakes, right? And so you can say that you're going to do that. Well, I have a way to do that and preserve yourself and preserve your schedule. Uh, so we'll go into that in a little bit. Yeah. And just to dive into kind of another point, and this is something that I definitely did in my earlier 20s. Um, don't give out your knowledge and energy for free. And that is something that I kind of had to learn the hard way. Um, but you know, it's, it, it really does become taxing to give, just to give, 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 um, and have people calling you asking for your expertise or, you know, I, I think, I, I think you can word things in a really kind and constructive manner, but when you have friends or people in your life that want to take it, not maybe not necessarily maliciously take advantage, but they want, they want your knowledge and they want your expertise and they want it for free because they're a friend. And that's a big boundary that I think almost everyone can relate to that needs to be implemented because you can say, Hey, I'm actually not working right now, but can we discuss a meeting during work hours to talk about this? Or, Hey, um, let me give you my card and you can call me during my business hours. I think it could be something as simple as that exercising that boundary of, I'm not giving out my knowledge for free. I'm not spreading my energy for free when it's time for me to sit back and enjoy myself. That is such good advice, which I have not been taking lately. And (laughs) so for the social media queen, my question for you would be, how do you, I guess, 
preserve that and preserve your knowledge in a world of like content creation on social media, where essentially everyone's looking for free knowledge in the spirit of creating content for exposure in a sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. And just to briefly answer that, it's, it's definitely this little niche industry that I'm in, um, or I guess position that I'm in. Um, it is one that people ask for your advice on all the time. Um, and it's, it's, it's definitely hard to find the words to be like, yeah, well, this is, you know, it's my job. It's not just making pictures. It's, it's a schedule, it's content production. And it's, um, it's a lot of strategic behind the scenes work. And usually that's my response when people kind of ask me for my expertise or how do you do this? Or what do you use? I say, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, and a lot goes into the behind the scenes. And, you know, when I'm not glued to my phone or my computer, it's really nice. <laughs> and that's just kind of what I say to nicely be like, yeah, I don't want to talk about this right now. It's my job. That is a great point. There have been times where, and if you're listening and you've done this, it is totally fine. I promise you, I get asked this question a hundred times if I'm at an event or something. But usually um, when people ask me, how do you do social media? I usually say kind of just just reiterating what I just previously said. I say, well, it's actually a lot of work. It's a lot of strategy and it takes a village. Uh, and I'm really happy right now that I'm not glued to my computer or phone because it's a job that follows you everywhere you go because social media is everywhere. It's so, it's so easy to get on. Uh, so usually I just say, you know, it's, it's nice to talk to you face to face and to not be glued to social media right now. And that's kind of, that's kind of my go-to. And I think that answer would work perfectly for bookkeepers to say the same thing. Yeah. Um, and then if they keep asking, uh, usually what I say is, well, here, my email is blank. Uh, shoot me an email or shoot me uh, a DM on bookkeepers.com Instagram. And we can set up a time to chat about this. And usually that's my go-to. And, um, I don't really feel too bad about it, to be honest, because it's, you shouldn't, it's that is so, that is so tactful. Like that is a wonderful way. I feel like to establish your boundaries in such a kind way that doesn't, I think it, it doesn't reject them. It validates their question. It says, I think that's so interesting. This is my experience. And I'd love to have this experience with you during work hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's, it's not really a rejection. It's a redirection. Exactly. And, and so it's like, I, I think that's another really important point to make is that you're not necessarily rejecting people who are breaking your boundaries, but you can redirect them to something that does work for you. Because at the end of the day, everybody has their boundaries. And it's something that you can't really be concerned about if it's somebody else's. You know what I mean? Like, in as kind of harsh as that sounds, it's really not that harsh because you really have to look out for what's best for you and your family. And if you don't want to talk about work when you're out to dinner with your friends on a Friday night, then by God, you shouldn't have to. It's a Friday night. <laughs> I want to have a margarita and not talk about this. And so that's, I think like finding strategic ways to redirect people who are kind of trying to break your boundaries, which by the way, be prepared for people to do that because it's going to happen over and over again. So I I think kind of what we're talking about right now, a really good point to make is to prepare for boundary breakers um, and find a strategic way to respond in a calm manner. Um, And that's something that I, Honestly, I think I'm pretty good at um, just, and that's by practice. It sounds like it. And I think that's a great point to end on as well. And that's also something that my business coach, my communication coach has been working with me on is that you cannot control what other people do, but you can prepare on how you will respond to it. We can't control what people say to us. We can't 
even control what people do to us sometimes, but we can control how we respond to it. And the best way to do that, exactly what you said, is to practice and be prepared for that. Yeah. I just think we talked about a lot of really great ways for you guys out there listening and for Melissa and I to work on establishing boundaries. As always, if you guys have questions or you would like to write into the show, uh, please shoot us an email at success at ilovebookkeeping.com. Again, that is success at ilovebookkeeping.com. Um, my name is Hannah Robinson. And I'm Melissa Honan. And thank you for listening to the I Love Bookkeeping podcast. I love bookkeeping. <gasps> Here's a little shout to all my friends working hard at keeping the books. You want to change your life, you want to grow that business. It's not as hard as it looks. 